Hi, everybody. Adam Savage here in my cave uh, with a live stream Q&A. Uh, the questions have come from tested patrons. If you want to know how to be a tested patron, in the comments below, you'll find everything you need. Um, and the questions today are about my employment and employment history. Um, and this is a really interesting subject. Uh, and I want to start out, <clears throat> I have here two pages of questions and they are awesome questions. I want to get to literally every single one. So I may end up talking fast, but I'd like to say up at the front, when you're watching stuff like this, especially, <clears throat> okay, the subject is my early work history. So I'm going to assume that the people that are going to watch this the closest are people who are curious about their own employment future and wondering how they can find their way into some of the industries or things that I have done in the past. And specifically, <clears throat> if some of my experience is applicable, and that is a totally reasonable thing to do. Um, but let me give a couple of caveats up front about that, which is... Every story from its current vantage point looks, every life story from its current vantage point looks fairly linear from the outside. Uh, it is anything but from the inside. I would wager if you, let's say you're doing something that you studied to do, well, your life was going to look like a pretty linear track from like being a kid, deciding in high school to concentrate on the thing, going to college for that, getting your master's degree, getting hired in that. Now you're doing it. That all looks really linear. But I am sure from the inside, it was all triage as it is for all of us. Right. We are trying to make life work while life is happening and all of these things are getting in your way. And. I just want to make it clear that while my life and my career trajectory looks in many ways quite linear, it was anything but from the inside. And the other person that makes this point all the time is Chris Hadfield. And Chris decided he wanted to be an astronaut when he was 12. And still, he's really clear that his path there was not linear, no matter how it looks to the rest of us mortals. And I think of the rest of us as mortals compared to Chris Hadfield. Um, so there's one is life stories are nonlinear and yours won't be either. And that's all right. Number two, <clears throat> luck plays a humongous role in it. Luck plays a massive role, uh, luck and privilege. And both of them have played tremendous roles. Specifically, when we're talking about my employment history and the ways in like, I will say things like, I quit that job because it was a terrible job. Those were decisions I was able to make because of the support I had from my family. My family absolutely has supported me um, my whole life, uh, sorry, in the things that I want to do. And there were points at which I needed financial support because I was working at a terrible job and they gave it to me. That it turns out I was a good bet, but that is a privilege. That is a tremendous privilege my parents gave to me. Uh, and it's not one that everybody benefits from. So like, lest there are some, lest there is some illusion that there's some personality quirk that led me to live this life. It is a combination of all of these things, luck and privilege and timing and personality and everything. So um, those are the caveats, lucky, privilege, linear. Those were my notes for the front. <laughs> um, and now let's talk about my employment history. Adam G says, what was the first job you ever had? The very first job I ever had that I was paid to do was making dollhouse furniture, making dollhouse findings. Uh, so my mom grew up in a place in New York called Sneedon's Landing. It was just at the edge of the Palisades on the western side of the Hudson River, opposite around Dobbs Ferry, if you know the Hudson River Valley. Uh, and in that neighborhood, uh, there was a couple, Helen and Andy Norman. They had wonderful kids. They had this big, beautiful house. And the Normans threw this Christmas party every year that everybody went to. Um, they were awesome human beings, old family friends. I grew up going to that house and knowing Helen and Andy. And Helen was a, uh, a, a pioneering dollhouse accoutrement manufacturer. So she's the first one to, I believe, take a modern product and throw it into the dollhouse world. She took the Bloomingdale's big brown bag, the famous Bloomingdale's big brown bag, uh, and she made a miniature of it. And this is in the 70s when this kind of thing wasn't happening. And she sold a gazillion of them. And I was like nine or 10 years old and she hired me. Maybe I was 11 or 12. 
Uh, she hired yeah, 11 at the most. She hired me to make some of the Bloomingdale's big brown bags. And this involved, um, she had them printed and then there was a cutout template. And then once you had it, there was a folding template for folding the flaps. And then there was a gluing template, like this piece of wood in the shape of the bag. And you put the thing over it and put some glue here and there and you assemble. And I did that. And then she also had some bottle and glass sets. So she had even had tooling made for injection molding and was doing these fine little glassware sets. And I had bags of like six bags, one for each kind of glassware. And I was grabbing some from each bag and then putting together packages. And I specifically remember doing this job terribly. I remember coming to her and going, all right, well, I did seven hours worth of work. And she was like, seven hours? Really? You did all this? Wow. You did it in the least efficient way possible. And you kind of are charging me too much for this because you took too long. I know that seems like a weird thing to say to an 11 year old, but I mean, in retrospect, I know that she was right. Um, I'll just, I don't have, I don't have any specific examples of stuff that Helen made, which is we probably do in my family, but I don't have it in my personal collection. But like, this is the kind of stuff she would make. Does this, can I show that? Like a little tiny, a little tiny stein of beer. Is that showing up? Yeah, right, like that kind of stuff. Helen was making it. So that's the very first thing I ever did for money in terms of making things. Then I had a paper route. I worked as a page and book, uh, book replacer at the local library, Warner Library, under the um, iron tutelage of Miss Sapashkov, who you did not want to, you did not want a stern look from Miss Sapashkov at the Warner Library back in the 70s and the early 80s. Uh, and then, uh, right, after being a library page, at the same time, there was a local public access station. Uh, and I started working there. I started uh, teaching, I started taking classes in using video equipment, and then I started teaching them because that's how public access works. It's like, you know how to use it? Do it. Teach someone else. Um, yeah, those were all the, those were all the earliest jobs. Eric Cawthorn says, tell us about the Charmin commercial. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, when I was 16, I played Mr. Whipple's stock boy in a Charmin commercial. For anyone under the age of 40, um, when we were kids, Charmin had this spokesman who ran for like 30 years, and he was Mr. Whipple, and he ran a local store. And uh, the set of commercials over decades was, you know, various problems in the store that were always solved by the fact that Charmin was the strongest bathroom tissue ever. And I was... Timmy or Jimmy, the stock boy. And the issue was that the roof was leaking all over the new Charmin. And I went, okay, so I was 16 and I had just decided that I wanted to be an actor. I had found my people in the drama club in high school and my father had been a commercial director. And so he said, you know, if you want to be an actor, I think I can help you find an agent because Charlie uh, is doing really well. And by Charlie, he meant Charles Kimbrough. Charlie Kimbrough played uh, Jim Dine on Murphy Brown. Uh, he also happened to start a whole bunch of television commercials my dad directed back in the 60s, uh, and they had stayed really close friends. Charlie's an amazing human being. I actually got to see him in the original little production of Sunday in the Park with George with Bernadette Peters and Mandy Patinkin on Broadway. Anyway, Charlie got me an agent, uh, Doris Mance at ICM, and Doris got me uh, uh, an audition for the Charmin commercial. Literally, all this happened inside of like 10 days. And I went to this audition, and I remember standing, it's my very first audition, I remember standing like in the middle of this room, and I can't see anyone else because there's bright lights on me and there's a camera kind of right there. And I can hear people chatting about me. Oh, I'm And then I can hear a guy go, man, he's a cute kid, isn't he? And like, that's how a commercial gets cast. A week later, I was on a soundstage with Mr. Whipple and we shot for 14 hours. And because I, that was a SAG job, I got paid something like for a 14 hour day, time and a half plus double time. I made like 850 bucks for that day, which for a 16 year old is like, it's like Scrooge McDuck backed up a truck to my house. It was amazing. I will tell you, Mr. Whipple, the actor's name, I can't remember, and I really should have looked it up and prepped for this, and I apologize to the world for not knowing his name, began his career as a background dancer in Hollywood, specifically in the movie Yankee Doodle Dandy, the movie, uh, 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 a musical, a musical starring James Cagney, who sang. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us here at Tested, one of the best ways you can do it is through a Tested membership. There's a link below as to the various 
levels of tested membership, but it's so much more than just exclusive videos. There are exclusive videos, but there are also live stream Q and A's. And the thing that I love most about the tested members is the interactivity, uh, the wonderful communication between not just me and the tested members, but our whole tested team. Every single day, it feels more and more like a community just devoted to the joys of making things. So join yourself up and become one of us.